actually lower your, T, your DHT in your muscles. This was my major concern when I stopped taking finasteride because I was scared that I was depleting my muscles from a very important androgen hormone. So first off, another disclaimer. I am still not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I don't know what I'm doing. You shouldn't listen to this. This is just me going through some studies, whatever I find interesting to educate you guys, to make your own choices, but you should never take prescribed medicine or anything else without consulting a doctor. With that said, let's continue. What's up guys? Today we are going to take a look at the compound DHT, namely dihydrotestosterone, which is a 5-alpha reduced metabolite from the compound we already know about, namely testosterone, or we'll call it T for now. And by that I mean that some of you guys have been asking on the channel whether finasteride, dutasteride or other 5-alpha reductase inhibitors are dangerous and what's going to happen if you lower your serum DHT too much and if post-finasteride syndrome is actually a thing. So what I have for you today is yet another study and I'll use that as my basis although with some other studies that I have linked below as I usually do. But first off you're gonna hear me ramble a little about my experience with DHT and how I went about back and forth on the fence with finasteride and my current view on finasteride and DHT and if I'm using it myself. So to start off of course, when I started combating hair loss, I first learned about 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, namely finasteride. It is the only legal compound in Denmark where I live that you can take. So I got it from my doctor and then I started reading up on the stuff. Now, what happened later was that I learned about post finasteride syndrome. I got a little scared. I jumped off the finasteride. I got a little rebound on the hair loss. Then I went back on the finasteride and off and back and off. Next thing is that in 2021, I started finasteride again because I just saw that I had significantly better results when I used a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. This led me to study a little up on how the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors work and actually how necessary is DHC actually for our body. So DHC, dihydrotestosterone, is almost the same as testosterone. The only difference is that DHT is far more androgenic than testosterone is in the first place. What the body uses this for is, and you can just check this in the article if you'd like to, this is from the second article I posted, so take a look if you want to know more about it, but I'm just gonna point out some specific points about this that I find especially interesting. When young men are gonna, or young boys are gonna become young men, they start producing more testosterone. Now, testosterone isn't actually what makes us men, so to say. It is actually the conversion of testosterone to DHT. DHT plays a significant role in our body when developing organs, lungs, liver, kidneys, and stuff like facial hair, also hair loss, unfortunately, and other very important stuff. Our bone density is also dictated by our androgen levels, so it's very important when we are growing into fully developed adults that we have enough androgens. This is also why taking steroids before the age of 25 is a stupid idea. Overall, steroid is a stupid idea, but if you take them before 25, you're gonna have some serious problems down the road. Another thing we see that is a problem, and this is usually with, in little boys with hypogonadism. This is when you don't produce testosterone, or at least not enough, yourself. They will have this condition, I don't know what the name is, but let's call it a micropenis. And this is actually due to androgens. Okay, so androgens is what makes us into men. It's what makes our stuff grow. It's what makes our hair grow, our beard grow, our hair <laughs> on the backs grow, and our organs and bone and stuff and muscles grow into fully matured organs. Now, when you're past 25, what is the role of DHC at that point? 
Well, if we take a look at the study I have here, it isn't actually a lot of stuff that DHT is doing for us at this point. Now, my major concern were that I knew that DHT had a process in the muscles. And since I was doing a lot of bodybuilding at that time, I was like, oh no, it's an androgen hormone. It has to be in my muscles. And I didn't actually know what it did, but I was just like, it has to be in my muscles because it's doing something in there. Some, it was doing some kind of synthesis. If we just take a look at the abstract, is that they actually found out that the circulating levels of DHT in response to testosterone replacement therapy do not correlate with those found in androgen sensitive tissue due to locally regulatory mechanism that tightly controls intracellular androgen homeostasis. So what this little paragraph actually meant is that in our muscles, we have intracellular mechanisms that will control our androgens. This means that it doesn't matter how much androgens you have in your body flowing around because your muscles will take care of that yourself, yeah, them, themselves, whatever you call it. Your muscles, your tissue can form DHT. This is also why some guys are using topical finasteride because your scalp can produce DHT, your skin can produce DHT. Of course, your organs then also can produce DHT. Hence, your muscles can produce DHT. And apparently, if we take a look at the study, if you take something like finasteride with your TRT, it doesn't actually lower your, T your DHT in your muscles. This was my major concern when I stopped taking finasteride because I was scared that I was depleting my muscles from a very important androgen hormone. Another super interesting paragraph from the study is this one. DHT does not play a substantive role in body composition compared to testosterone under normal condition. Thus, elevated levels of DHT in response to TRT are unlikely to appreciably impact lean or fat mass. Nonetheless, data from animals suggest a role for DHT in adipose tissue that inhibits biomechanical pathways involved in lipid synthesis, promotes several transcripts associated with apoptosis of adipocytes. Since this is from animals, we don't know whether these studies actually transcribe into human bodies as well. It doesn't always work that way. But what we know from the study is that androgens or DHT doesn't play a role in body composition for grown adults. This means we know DHT is important for young kids. And now we also know that DHT isn't important for grown ass men. So guys, I'm not gonna ramble more about DHT for now. This is the first video I made on the DHT and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. And if you want to know more about DHT and if it's important for your body, just stick around. I'll make a few more videos about it and in no time you'll all be experts in DHT. And with that said guys, until next time, cheers.